Hey guys and welcome back to Factorio. Let's uh, let's try and get the rest of this power column made and we'll get some more burner inserters for it. It should be good. I need some more iron gears. Uh, I should probably also get, uh, excuse me, there we go. I should probably also get some of this made into electric mining drills so that we're not using coal all the time. That'd be fabulous. And so that we can start to increase the amount of iron that we're actually producing. Because these take a lot of iron. Uh, okay, I'm going to need two stone for I don't know why I would two there. I only need one, really. Alright. And what we'll do is we'll shove that there. So, as you can see, the, the green area is where this thing will mine. So, if I, if I put it there, it'll mine uh, this line here that I'm standing on. But if I put it there... Uh, if I put it there, it won't. And if I put it there, it'll be mining an area that doesn't actually have any ore. So, <clears throat> whoops. <laughs> and then I misplace it. Because I'm an idiot. There we go. Right, let's uh, pull this down. Ah. Right, let's get that connected up so that it is sorted. What we need is you there and pull it one away. You there and you there. Uh, two of these. Some of this. Let's shove the coal in there. Alright, so one uh, one inserter can... Uh, sorry, one electric mining drill can mine enough to keep two of these going at once. That's your ratio there. It's a one to two. Alright, and right now I'm still going to need to manually place some coal in. But that's has just doubled the the mining capa uh, the uh, the smelting capacity of our iron, which is fantastic. Our coal right now is still absolutely fine. Uh, let's go and pick up some more copper. We won't need a lot of copper for now. Uh, do we need any more stone? Mm, I'm... Uh, let's take another stack, just in case. Alright, let's grab another stone furnace, and uh, what we'll do is we'll shove you here and you here. And this is a very rudimentary furnace column. It's more iron plate. Uh, so I... this isn't going to... this is just a stopgap right now. This is not by any stretch of the imagination going to be my, my final furnace column setup. Uh, so don't you worry, I'll be showing you a slightly better one. A slightly better one. Well, yeah. It's a substantially better one, let's put it that way. Alright, we need another miner. And we can shove this on the other side. I'm going to shove it slightly lower, just so that we can catch all of the, uh... All of the ore there. There we are, so now with the two of these, they should mine up enough to keep all four of these going. Perfect. And you, there we go. Right, and what I now need is another couple of these. I've got one down, uh, so those nine will do. That'll take us up to ten. And then we'll need another couple to keep us going. There we go, and they'll all just fuel themselves and then start fueling the uh, the boilers. Which is glorious. So to do the rest of this, I'm going to need to grab some more iron. Bop, bop, bubbity bop. Uh, one, two, three. What? How did I end up with so many? Oh, apparently, oh, apparently I had two more and I just didn't place them. <laughs> what an idiot. There we go, and that should keep us going. And now we've got the, the full available performance out of all of these. Alright, and what I do need though is I need some more steam engines to finish off the column. So we've got four, uh, this will be the fifth, and we're going to need another five. Bonk. Another five just to completely complete that. Completely complete it. Indeed. So that's two. Unfortunately these require quite a quite a lot. They require quite a lot of uh, materials to actually get them going. So right now we've got this this little patch here. 1.8k isn't an awful lot. Like that's a really small patch to power to, to fuel our power supply. So what what's going to end up happening is that's going to end up running in the 
not so distant future run 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 out in the not so distant future and we're going to need to sort that but we've got quite a quite a substantial uh coal setup going over here so it shouldn't be too bad right so the next thing that we want to do is hmm ponder ponder life and its meaning uh, i'm going to set up a bit more smelting for iron right now and I'm still looking forward until I've got uh, the weapons of mass, mass uh, deforestation so that I can just get rid of all these trees. Trees are okay in the early game, like sometimes you, you use a, a bit of wood but once you start getting into the late game, it's, trees are just the biggest pain in the ass ever. Alright. Let's shove that in, let's grab you there and you there and actually not two of you. There we go. Alright, so basically what what we're doing right now is there's, there's always... The way that Factorio works is there, there are always bottlenecks. So you're always going to find something that's bottlenecking you in one way or another. So right now what's bottlenecking us is, is the amount of iron that we're making. And... Um, at least, at least for this current moment in time, we've got not enough, uh, not enough mining for the amount of smelting that we have. So that's easily fixed because I've already built uh, I've already built some more miners. So now, okay, that's us done. And eventually, if we just keep adding on to this one belt, the bottleneck is going to be the actual belt, like this yellow belt. And then that's when we're going to start having issues. So that's, it's basically, that's the, the full crux of Factorio, is that you're constantly trying to juggle what your bottleneck is and try to get it right until eventually you get your, uh, your launch silo thing. Hujima, what's it? Until you launch your, your nuclear deterrent. I mean, your, uh, your weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> uh, it's so ridiculous, like the... The game, it's, it's a factory building game, that's what you do, but then when you actually think about the, the story behind what you're doing, it's uh, it's a bit brutal. Alright, let's keep placing these. How many have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and I've built an extra one because I'm a douche. So right now you can see we've got temperature 100 here. Uh, I, won't really, I won't really show you until... Yeah. I won't really show you until they're under heavy load. You, you won't be able to, to notice. So there we go, now we're making 380 odd kilowatts, we're using a load of, a load of power for different bits and bobs. Uh, inserters, regular inserters, they consume energy as they are, uh, they consume energy while they're idling and as they're working. Like, they consume more energy as they, like, when they're actually moving stuff into places. Alright. Grab all of this, beautiful. And you can see that our uh, our pollution has slowly but surely started to get higher and higher. So, uh, steam engines don't create any pollution because it's just steam, but the all these boilers create a fair bit of pollution. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to explore the edge of my pollution cloud just to make sure that we're not going to encounter any biters. So you can see you get you get quite a quite a generous amount of exploration around your character which is nice so it means that you you don't need to get too close to the biters uh, to see that they're there which is pretty awesome for us. Right, let's pull up here and we'll see if there's any more. Because one thing that I don't want right now is I don't want to be getting hit by the biters before we're we're even ready. Oh that's nice we've got a nice a nice water wall behind us so we don't really need to worry about that. But we'll end up polluting straight across that water. Because water provides very little um, pollution reduction. More pollution reduction than if you paved the ground, but still very, very little. Uh, okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually start getting a lab so that we can research. You probably noticed in the top right we've got press T to start new research. Well, in order to do that we need a lab. So let's create a lab. And we'll plonk that down. Unfortunately we've got a lot of intermediate products that need to be created before we can create a lab. But as soon as we get that created, we should be laughing. Right, well, the next thing that I've got to do as well is we're going to have to... 
Okay, let's uh, plonk our lab down. We can plonk it down just here. And then the research screen pops up. So what do we want to research? Well, obviously, the game is about automation. So the most logical thing to, to research is automation first. So let's do that. Research and automation takes 10 red science packs or science pack ones. These little uh, conical flasks or Erlenmeyer flasks if you want to be a twat. Uh, it's a conical flask because it's shaped like a cone. Um, <laughs> regardless, uh, these little conical flasks are your science packs. And what 10 research pack, 10 science packs, uh, 10 arbitrary units, and that's per science pack, so 100 arbitrary units. I think it's actually seconds, I'm still not sure. Um, and you, no, it's, it's definitely not, it's just time units because they get lowered and sped up by different things. So, yes, 10, 10 time units, uh, 10 science uh, per science pack, so it's 100 time units, and we will get an assembly machine one, which is your first step to automate. Automation, it can craft items, and your long-handed inserter, which is the exact same as a regular inserter, except instead of, like, where, whereas your your regular inserter will, if you place it here, it pulls from this tile, a long-handed inserter will pull from that tile. And in, as, as well, it will, instead of placing to that tile, it will place to that tile. So it extends it by one, because it's got an extra long arm. Okay, so in order to get automation, we're going to need to make the 10 science packs in our pocket. So, 510, there we go. Takes one copper and one iron gear. So it's one copper and two, uh, two iron. And that can make you a science pack. And obviously you're gonna need them before you can do anything else. Oh, oh, we've completely mined out that little piece of, uh, piece of stone that was sitting there. Grab those copper plates and grab some of this coal. Beautiful, We've got tons of coal now. Alright, so that's just got uh, five science pack ones. Let's shove them in here. There we go. Now you can see that this is going to start plowing along. So you may notice these little module slots here. Modules are something that you can improve the, uh, the stats of a building, but right now it doesn't really matter because we, we don't have them, we've not researched them, so. We can't actually do anything. Right, so this has got our 10, our 10 science packs sitting in the lab. So that lab will just slowly work, the way, work its way through those science packs and uh, make us some sweet, sweet science. It's actually placed in the wrong position. There we go. Yeah, it was, it was placed to, to be in line with that one instead of slightly offset like the other one. All right, so that's that done. So now I need to I need to kind of decide where I want my uh, let's chop down some of this wood. Uh, where I want to put my furnace columns because we're going to need furnace columns. Like it's the that's the top and bottom of it. Is we're going to need furnaces to smelt down some of the stuff. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have 8 on each side because that will fill a belt. So I'm going to need 16 furnaces. So that's 10. Uh, let's head over here and grab some more stone. We might need to actually start mining some more stone now. Uh, 10, 15, 16. Which is... Hmm. I've... Uh, it used to be 8. It used to be 8, but I'm sure that's actually changed. So I may need to, uh, I may need to double check that and explore it a bit. Right, let's, uh, let's have a little look here. What have we got going? So we've got logistics, which is really, really important because it allows you to do underground belts and splitters. So underground belts, if you've ever tried to do the, there's an old, uh, puzzle and it's, um, you've got three houses. And you're trying to get gas, water, and electricity to each of the houses. If you've ever tried to do that, then you can understand why underground belts are really important. Because in Factorio, you can't cross belts because obviously they'll just start pumping on each other. And you want underground belts in order to bypass belts. Uh, splitters evenly split anything that comes into them 50-50 on either side. So that's why that's what splitters are used for. They're also They can also be used to merge belts back together. But we'll talk about that when it comes to it. And we can get fast inserters, which are just, just plain better. Uh, so let's research logistics. 
But, in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab two assembly machines. And why, you may be asking. Well, I will be telling. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to automate the production of red science. All right, so we place that there and that there. So this is this is a, a very simple, super easy uh, way to automate red science. So you do a red science pack here. Uh, let's get some one, two, three, four inserters. So you want this assembler to be creating red science packs. You want this assembler to be creating iron gear wheels. And you pull out of this box, you pull out of that box, you go into there and you go into there. Put that there, and all you need to do now is put in double the iron to the copper, and you will make yourself an even number of red science packs that will go in there. So, what I've put in here will make us 100 red science packs. So, there you go, that's how you automate science very early on. Right, easiest, easiest little build to do, super simples. Right, next, let's start with our furnace chain because what you want to do is you want to start mass producing stuff because you know it's the name of the game that's what you're trying to do so while we're waiting on that to go we will just start mass producing stuff so one of the easiest furnace chains to do and i'm thinking i'm going to run my ores down the bottom in a long uh i might just jump under this uh run my ores down here and let's make a couple of these so i'm going to from ores down here along with some uh, coal and then let's grab my furnace chains and go up here uh, space uh, oops wrong way so you'll see why I'm doing this in a second um, I'm doing the the reason I'm building it the way I am is it's future proofing future proofing because what ends up happening is in the in the future in the game you get a thing called electric furnaces which instead of using fuel they use electricity obviously makes sense but they take up one extra space on the side so what I'm doing is I'm currently placing these here so that they uh so that when I start moving on to electric furnaces I can remove these little inner belts and have the electric furnaces working just fine for us. Okay, so that's that. 5, 10, 15, uh, 20, 5, 30. Right. So these guys all need to be outputting onto here. And I'm going to get my iron. Oh god, I just I just pushed something thinking it was something completely different, but it wasn't. I'm so used to having my my toolbar set up in a very specific way that whenever I'm looking for a specific item, I place it wrong. Like I uh, I push that button and it just doesn't work. All right, I need I need splitters to be researched before I can do exactly what I'm trying to do. <laughs> oh, such a dark. Okay, and I can start to automate stuff like that, but I'm going to leave it right now, and I'm going to wait until I've got my furnace column set up before I start to automate stuff. Alright, let's pick up a few of these. Make sure that they're getting enough coal. Sweet, 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 sweet. How are you doing? You're doing alright. You're slowly but surely getting there. Awesome. Alright, let's go and pick up some more copper plate. Mm, I do feel like... Let's grab one of you. Shove you here. Shove an inglorious amount of copper into you. Walk down a wooden chest. There you go. Uh, not copper, coal. Alright, let's pick up some more coal. I've probably got more coal than uh, I'll use now. At least until I start getting trains. Like, more coal in my inventory than I'll use, because I won't... Like, you hardly ever use coal after this initial setup bit. Once you start getting electricity and automating everything so it goes the right way. You hardly ever use coal from your pocket into something. Alright. 
There we go, and pull it on from here. All right. Four, three, two, one. Perfect. Okay, so what's going to happen is we're going to have the input, the coal and the uh, ores on this side. And then we're going to have the uh, coal and ores on that side and then have them outputting the iron onto this side. But unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in this episode. So do remember that if you've enjoyed the episode to drop a like down below and subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But as always, I've been Cedro, you've been awesome. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.